elections, the United Democratic Movement believes it will return to Parliament after the polls, despite declining electoral support. Party leader Bantu Olomisa hitting out at the ANC when he unveiled the UDM's manifesto yesterday, which promises to be tough on corruption. Well, Mr. Olomisa is with me in studio, and I'm going to walk straight towards him as we have this conversation and as he fixes his documents there. Mr. Olomisa, good evening to you. Good evening, good evening, Polly. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, I'd like for you to take us back to the period 2021. Mm -hmm. And this was a time when you decided to report the then Minister of Defence, Nosevuma Pesangagula. You reported her to the Standing Committee on Defence. At the time, you believed very strongly that there was an issue of misconduct on her part. This is part and parcel of the theme of corruption that the UDM has been fighting against since your expulsion from the ANC. When you made that report to the Standing Committee on Defence, what, did you, what information did you have against Minister Nosefirma Pisangakula as she was then? I thought uh, you have invited me to talk about the manifesto I launched yesterday. And, I didn't, make, and I didn't even make a reference to Nosefirma Pisangakula. <laughs> where, where do, I, do you want me to get involved into a high-level gossip? <laughs> but on a, serious, on a serious note, yes. Fortunately, the witness uh, who, who blew the whistle has now come up in the open and she has uh, been cooperating with the investigating officers and uh, the evidence I handed over or tabled in the Joint Standing Committee on Defense mm -hmm. is the same as, we, as I saw the papers today. So, which means I was spot on to, after evalu evaluating that report or that information, mm -hmm. and I handed it over to Joint Standing Committee on Defense. The defense didn't do much because the chairperson, it was Mr. Uh, uh, some, somebody, uh, what is his name? I forgot his name. But uh, he was more interested in knowing the witness. And I said, no, why? Look at the content. Was it Mr. Cyril Baba? Baba, yes, yes, yes. So I could see that uh, he was more p pushing the ANC's policy, yeah. that of always putting or protecting their own instead of looking at the interest of the country. You'll forgive me, Mr. Olomisa, for continuing on this theme mm -hmm. because... I'm linking, I'm trying to make a link between your establishment of the UDM on the back of that expulsion from the ANC because at that time you had made very serious allegations against Stella Stau and bribery allegations. But the point I'm trying to build on is that those corruption allegations against ANC members, senior ANC members, have not abated. If anything, they seem to be getting worse. So... Let's focus the attention on Mapisa Makula. The Sunday Times reporting today that Mapisa Makula allegedly solicited bribes amounting to millions of rand from the businesswoman you are talking about. The paper quoting Makula admitting to not only knowing her but also having met her. And so based on that very document that you had submitted to the committee, do you believe on the strength of the allegations contained in that document that this is going to be very damaging for the Speaker of Parliament? Because that's what Nosevo Mapisa Magula is today. She's a Speaker of the National Assembly. Uh, Koli, let me keep it short and to the point. Mm. After uh, the speaker said, uh, if I have a pro problem or complaint, I should approach the police. I reported the matter to the police. 
the police investigating team or what yeah the investigating team did come to my offices mm -hmm. to take a statement and indeed they have been keeping me informed and I guess the main complainant is also being kept informed mm -hmm. according to the report I got from the investigating officers yeah. the investigation was finished last year around October and they had told me that anything can happen from now later on I inquired from them this year and they told me that uh, the, they are ready they are looking for him they are going to arrest her this year later on, later on I heard that uh, the powers that be have said no at least after the son so the docket has been finalized and if parliament is going to be involved I would suggest that the impeachment process must start or alternatively the speaker should resign and the ANC nominate another person this one is above board it's clear and this witness has also signed uh, I think it's section 204 let me help you it is yes. a section 204 witness yes and what that means yes is that he's prepared she's prepared to go into the guillotine with her in essence yes how the paper is reporting it is that being a section 204 witness means that you are making incriminating yes your statements against yourself yes and it could also be that you are providing evidence yeah. that implicates yourself mm -hmm. but the reason you are giving all this information is so that in turn you are prevented or you are not prosecuted ultimately this is basically to provide you with some immunity from prosecution so do you believe again I ask you this question on the strength of what is contained in that document that the speaker as you say if she doesn't resign therefore a process of impeachment should be instituted against her I'm fully confident I read uh, the, the, those documents you recall I even said the, 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 the WhatsApp conversation between the two and the police and then have gone to investigate as I said to you they said they have finished investigation but I sense that political interference is playing a dirty hand here finally on this issue as you suggest politics may possibly play a part here what should be Nosevue Mapisa Makula's step right now? What should she be considering? And I'm asking this question because we did approach her with my team for comment. They are still getting back to us. We have not heard from them. Do you suspect that something is afoot in the background, whether she could be contemplating resigning or perhaps there could be something else? Well, if I were in her boots, I would resign, having assessed the information from the complainant. Here, we don't have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. Balance of probabilities is sufficient enough for the ANC to recall the speaker if they are serious in combating corruption. That then leads us into your manifesto presentation at the weekend at Gallagher State and I'm speaking with the theme of corruption your party stance here has been very firm that you are anti-corruption fighters you've even promised special courts to prosecute corruption both in the public and private sector but despite all these efforts mm -hmm. Mr. Olomisa your party remains a minority party mm -hmm. in Parliament. Why is it that people are not giving you 
the necessary power mm -hmm. by voting you in mm. in large numbers so that mm. they believe in the work of what you're doing and that is fighting corruption you sound as if you know what will be the results of 2024 uh, election well i'm basing it on the previous outcomes no this year we are talking about spending time and money and resources campaigning to go to parliament and run the country otherwise if you are not having ambitions all these parties you will see them they have a manifesto which say if i'm in government this is what i will do but my manifesto it, it differs a little bit because we are not just uh, lamenting you we identify a problem and then we provide suggested solutions right so it is in that spirit that uh, if for instance there will be a government of coalition after the forthcoming elections obviously the united democratic movement if it is going to be invited or participate in such discussions hmm. after elections we will put our manifesto and say we can assist you on condition you say yes to the following points we have raised in our manifesto so it's not going to be a coalition hmm. where the big brother is just going to uh, dominate and tell us this is their policy hmm. so take it or leave it special courts dedicated to corruption cases mm -hmm. do you believe that that is the ultimate cure they, for corruption in this country Vegas, we still have piles and piles of doggets where the courts are postponing this case almost every day mm -hmm. there are lawyers in this country who are going to court whose duty is just to postpone cases and they collect money and then go to another court postpone cases but if you have a special arrangement to say all those for instance who have been fingered in the zondo commission and that the police if they have found a prima facie evidence as a result of that then those special courts can focus on that and that should serve as a as a deterrent for would be corrupt officials added to that we need to stop this thing where political directives laced with corruption are given to the accounting officers that is simply that means uh, the the political heads are usurping the powers of the accounting officers mm. We must stop that. How? You stop it by saying, if I get a minister who has poked her nose into the issuing of tenders or a councillor gate, show him the gate. Let's talk. I practiced this before. Must remember. Let's talk about um, basic education. Mm -hmm. You're promising to pay special attention in order that it is stabilized what do you believe is fundamentally wrong mm -hmm. with the the basic pillars of basic education i think what we should do in this country first of all we must never leave some of the key tenets of education and economy only in one political part there is a need to converge under one roof mm -hmm. and identify the pillars of our education look at the syllabus first of all as to whether if a standard a grade 12 kid a student mm -hmm. if he cannot or she cannot proceed to university or technical he or she can make life make a living for himself or herself it is for that reason why i was part of the establishment of the, of the tutuka project whose aim was to prom was to produce black chartered accountants we supplied study guides on maths accounting english uh, with the view that these students 
will be it would be easy when they study uh, uh, they, they 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 enroll with F economic faculties yeah. today that project has produced more than 2000 black chartered accountants 50% of that is women it's the kind of syllabus which you must look into which at least because those who didn't go to university they can now start their own businesses because they can they know what is what is the meaning of a cash book trial balance and so on okay. so we, we we need to be pragmatic especially that we have been producing the students who after they graduated or left grade 12 their main aim is to look for a job Yet, if in the last 30 years we had invested in this black majority by making sure that we create or build wealth creators who will provide jobs to their own people. Currently, over 60 million blacks in this country are chewing for jobs from the companies which are owned by 3 million, population of, 3 million white population. Not even Every white owns a company. So this education syllabus, therefore, must be directed to make sure that at least these people will be assets in, in developing the economy of this country. Let's focus the attention on youth unemployment, because that's where we have now opened or directed the conversation towards. You are talking about reintroducing voluntary national service. This could be in the army or any other state institution. Why is this a, a viable option if it was abolished previously? It was abolished previously because it was seen to be associated with the oppression, the apartheid system. And the people who were forced to go and join the army were white South Africans. But right now, if we want to instill discipline and we want to, to promote patriotism, uh, that program can, uh, can, can be uh, useful for our youth. Because if we say, after you have graduated, let's say you, are a, you, have, you have graduated, and then we say go and do a national service, not necessarily in the military, Others will go into the military, but uh, if it's a compulsory, what is going to happen is that you will see medical doctors being soldiers, and when you have a crisis, you can deploy those doctors. So that's why the military of the Afrikaners was more like uh, a government on its own, because it catered for all these different professions. And when there's a crisis, you don't have to look around. You just send troops go and do this, fix that, there's cholera there, go there with your doctors. And so that would be some kind of a solution, at least for now, for young people who are loitering the streets. No, 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 no. That is different. I'm talking about need to instill discipline and also promote patriotism. Mm. When it comes to the unemployment, it's different. And that's the element I want to focus on. And in, if you read our manifesto, we are saying there must be a, we, the country must establish a national fund which will help these students when they have graduated to start their own businesses and be small entrepreneurs. Or, and then in doing so, let's say, for instance, your child has uh, graduated, uh, he was doing, uh, she was doing a uh, uh, fashion design. So this is a nucleus of a person who can be a manufacturer of a textile in this country. But if you send this person in China or France or Italy for practicals, she is going to come back. Then the story will be, what must I do? I don't have access to capital. Yeah. This is for that reason that there must be this national fund established precisely to absorb these youth, to absorb the youth and also to tell them that we are taking a different route, we are investing more on the black child so that you are going to be a wealth creator 
and to employ more people in your small business. As we conclude this conversation, I know mm. it's not enough time for you to go through the entire yes, yes, manifesto yes. of the UDM. But I, I'd like to focus the attention a little bit on political parties mm -hmm. and the, their participation in this democracy. Your party has been in existence now mm -hmm. for some time. And yes, as we said at the beginning of the conversation, the support, though, electoral support, has been dwindling. Those who want to make an entrance into mm -hmm. the political space, they are complaining today based on the electoral law that political parties like yours mm -hmm. in Parliament were mm -hmm. represented there. You helped approve this new electoral law mm -hmm. that says if you are new mm -hmm. to the political space, go around the country collecting signatures. Mm -hmm. And these signatures must be X amount so that you are put on the ballot paper. They are complaining bitterly to say you in Parliament right now, we're never going to make it easy for new entrants like them. Why, why is it that they, you they, made, you agreed to this? Kohli, they are 120% correct. Mm. And the view of the United Democratic Movement has been to one, let us amend our electoral act to make sure that uh, there is a mixed system. You build a constituency-based system and also proportional representation system. In that way, you would eliminate all this nonsense of going to con constitutional court because it automatically you will build in the accountability from, from, the, from the voters' point of view. Right. And so we also re suggested that there must be separate uh, election for a president. So that you, your president is not uh, uh, responsible or to report to 3,000 delegates of his party mm -hmm. against the 60, 65 million population. So they are 120% correct. That is why I, I assisted them last week by convening a meeting and we wrote a letter to, this, to the IEC requesting the IEC to give an extension for this registration of signatures, at least up until April. Mm -hmm. And we requested a meeting with them. IEC, typical of their arrogance, they discarded that. So that is why now you see other parties are saying we are throwing in our towel. So which means the Constitutional Court judgment eh, was not tight enough detailed enough. Right. They immediately said, Parliament, please go and uh, help these people. Bantuolo Misa, let's leave it there. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to Good. ask you to remain <laughs> there for a moment while I link to another story. That's a leader of the United Democratic Movement, Bantuolo Misa.